Welcome back to Vix Projects everyone. I hope you're well. In the last episode we put down some colour and now it's time to put things back in the engine bay. Since our last episode I have been busy getting a few jobs out of the way. We've done some under sealing in the wheel wells and the transmission tunnel. I've screwed in the wiring loom. Uh, I've sent off a load of brackets and bits and pieces for powder coating, some odd bits of steel for zinc plating, some aluminium components for aqua blasting, and I've also opened my wallet because, yeah, <laughs> I think this whole job is all about opening your wallet really, isn't it? Uh, so I went and bought some new shiny components um, where we need it. Okay, so what are we going to focus on today? Well, I'm going to focus on the fluid systems. So anything with copper lines, we're going to get all of those routed. So that's the brakes, the clutch, and the fuel system as well, because that's got some hard copper lines. So in order to do that, we're going to need some things to aim at. So let's get them installed. When it comes to reassembly, having the photos from when you took it all apart really start to come in handy and stop you pulling your hair out. Not that I've got much left anyway. I'm using some silicon grease here. It makes reassembly smooth, but also helps keep the pedal action smooth too. Oh, and see that little indent on the bar? That's for the lock bolt. Guess how many attempts it took me to get that all lined up. The last bit before the pedal box went in was those studs, which Jaguar handily put UNF on one side and UNC on the other. I guess the coarse thread on the aluminium side helps keep it nice and strong. There is a trick to this bit, by the way. Watch carefully or you might just miss it. This reservoir bottle has bugged me ever since I've owned this car, so at this stage I'm definitely spending the £35 to replace it. As far as I know, this brake booster is fine, so I'm not going to give it a full service. Oh, by the way, it took me ages to find that there was a locking pin keeping that on. No, the main reason this guy is coming apart is because there's some surface rust forming, so it makes sense to address that now. And it's just going to get a rattle can refurb. Now we've got something to aim at, we can figure out where all those lines are going to run. But for that, we need to go back in time. And here we are, back before all that lovely paint went in the engine bay. Now, I am ignorant of what's to come. You already know because you've seen the last episode. But fingers crossed, uh, everything goes smoothly and our new paint job looks lovely. It should do because it's all in the prep work. And herein lies what we're about to do today. So, if you recall back a couple of episodes ago when I took everything out, I said this. And our next thing to remove is this dog's dinner of copper lines. We're going to have to do something better when we put it all back in. And my, it was really bad. So, let's not make those mistakes again. We're going to start figuring out where all those lines should go so it's all nice and neat. And then I can figure out where to drill the holes, because I don't want to drill holes in nicely... Uh, fresh paint um, to get all of these mounted. So where to start? I think the fuel. Well that was easy. But what about the brakes? Hmm, this is going to be much easier with a system diagram. So the reservoir goes to the master, and that bit goes to the rear calipers, now, that's much easier. I can just connect the dots. Oh, damn it, the fuel line's in the wrong place. And our last hard line to route is the clutch. Now, if you remember back to the last episode, there was a little bracket just on here that we removed. I'm going to remove this little bracket right here. And why? Well, you'll have to wait for another episode to find out. And that's right. That was for the clutch. So what happened is the hard line ran up to that point there. It would then be a soft jump over to the engine and you'd then have a hard line that ran all the way down to the, uh, to the clutch and the gearbox. So I think we can tidy up the engine bay a bit, simplify Jaguar's routing by running from here directly down into the tunnel and then having a soft line that jumps across from the chassis onto the gearbox. And that'll be so much cleaner. So. Let's run that down. Oh, 
And while we're there, we can also route this speedo cable. I'm now committing to drilling the holes before paint, but if I was going to do this again, I'd probably make all the lines at this stage and then finalize the holes after. Oh well, lesson learned. Now let's fast forward back to the future and start making some lines. I'm using some of the old hard line here to make a pattern that I can use to bend up the new shiny lines. Once you've cut the copper, you need to deburr both the inside and the outside before using that flaring tool. It's worth having a practice on some offcuts first to get your eye in with the tool and help you remember that you need to put the fittings on before you flare it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to start again. So, knowing that I'm gonna get something wrong on the first go, I've started with the two smallest lines so that I don't throw too much away. Thankfully though, I managed to get both of these right the first time. I found it helpful to have a couple of pre-bent offcuts with marks on them that help line up where that bender needs to be placed to bend up the new shiny lines. This long one that runs over to the other side of the car needs some tighter radius bends. And as you can see, this one is pretty complex. It's best to leave some extra line at the end to trim down. On this big one, by the time it was all bent up, I'd used up pretty much all that margin. You could say that I judged it perfectly, but really, <laughs> it was just dumb luck. So that's our brake system done, and that wasn't too bad. Fingers crossed all those joints hold fluid, and we don't end up with brake fluid everywhere. We'll find out a bit later on, but first we've got to get the clutch done and the fuel. So, rinse and repeat. Well, I'm so glad that this is on the internet, because it just makes everything so quick and easy to do. If this was real life, it would have taken me ages. So the clutch was nice and easy, but these fuel lines are an absolute pig to bend. Where they're so much bigger, you end up, yeah, there's some bits which aren't that great. Uh, also, my flaring tool was not the right kind of size for it, but that's all right. We got some olives instead. That's what the original fuel system had to make that work and seal. So that actually turned out nice and easy. When I took a quick look at the fuel system, i.e. this old filter, which we will be replacing, uh, I noticed that it was absolutely full of crud and rust from the tank. So that was another job for the list to drop the tank out and seal it all up. We did try this before in a previous episode, but we didn't actually seal it. We just tried to use some rust converter, shook it all around, but clearly that's not good enough. So I put some of this stuff in there and fingers crossed that sorts it for good. Well, I hope you have fun on this episode. I certainly did. Brake lines was a new one for me. And when you take a step back, I'm really pleased I did it because they look so much better than they did before. In the next episode, we're going to be getting ready for the engine to go in, which means doing everything else <laughs> that needs to get done in here. So that's it. We'll see you next time on Fixed Projects.